exhibit is about celebrating 150 years of agriculture history in BC. The North Thompson Valley actually was settled quite late, so our history began in the late 1800s with the exploration. So we started off by focusing on agriculture. So the agriculture display kind of is a theme throughout. We have lots of exhibits that people have donated uh, through the museum, through individuals who wanted to have their items down here for people to look at. We've tried to incorporate both then and now. So you've seen that with the tractors. We have a tractor from the 1950s and a tractor from 2007, both McCormick's. We have incorporated the branding. The branding, uh, we've recorded brands from the valley that are either still in use or... So with the first pillar being agriculture, we focused on that because that was one of the keys in the valley right from the start. Uh, we've included logging in that because for agriculture to happen, we needed to clear the land for home sites and for farming. There were um, some small areas with natural meadows, but the valley really has been logged to create the farms. The farming has really changed over the years. There were a number of dairy farms in the valley. We're down to one. There used to be Christmas tree farming. There is now only one Christmas tree farm left. Uh, ranching certainly is still here, even though the cattle markets aren't great. Hay farming is a predominant um, industry here. Gardening was a way of life back then. Everyone had a garden to have enough produce to keep them fed for the year. People still love to garden here and have bountiful gardens and beautiful flower gardens. However, people don't have to do that. They go to the grocery store much more than they used to be able to. Um, the ways that people farm has certainly changed. It was a lot of hard labor in the old days. Mechanization has certainly taken over with much larger, quicker equipment. We have demonstrated this with the equipment that's on display as well as having uh, photo boards or written boards that tell people what it was like then and what the farming's like now and how it has changed. So we have a special branding display that was initiated at the BC 150 birthday this year in August and it's culminating here this weekend. We're going to finish branding um, North Thompson Valley Brands. Whether these are still in existence or whether it's your family brand, people are able to bring a drawing and we can recreate that brand for, for history purposes and we will have a permanent display here. We have on display the ways that people can brand. So we have the old-fashioned iron brands that were put in a fire. Now they can be heated usually with a propane torch and used. We have electric hot brands, freeze brands. So these are all on display for people to see. The second pillar that we focused on is community and fall fair. So we have a lot of photos and memorabilia from past fall fairs that show the integration of the community and the fair. It's a mutually supportive role. The fair brings lots of people into the community and the people of the community put on the fair and benefit economically and, and also benefit in ways that can't be measured in dollars. The friendships and the time. There are some old kitty cars on display that were used in the fair in the late 50s and early 60s. This was one of the original rides and at some point we hope to have these cars renovated and the ride, the full ride, on display at the fair again. As far as the, the valley history, the, mu the museum has put together a timeline from the late 1800s, from the early exploration days, until the present. Uh, it has large print and a lot of photos, so many people have been spending time reading the history of the valley. As well, one of the students that worked at the museum put together the Simca history, including food, games and entertainment, homes and seasons, so th that was displayed as well. The third pillar that we chose was arts and culture, and for this, we tried to show the then and now. Arts in the old days here focused on practical items. People didn't have time to do fancy artwork as such. Their artwork focused on the things that they could use in everyday life. So there was the knitting, the weaving and spinning, the making of, of rugs, embroidery on pillowcases and aprons. More of a practical nature than what we have time for today. Today the valley has many artists 
through um, painters, musicians, potters, there's a fiber arts guild, performing arts, there's a theater com company that puts on a play every year. The valley really is now a wealth of artistic um, endeavors. The fall fair itself sees many changes in their hall exhibits along with the, change that the changes that are happening in the arts community. I'd like to thank BC Fairs and Exhibitions and the Ministry of Agriculture for providing us the funding to put on this exhibit. We'd also like to thank all the contributors who had a lot of fun bringing all their old artifacts down. Participants have loved this exhibit. We have a lot of written material trying to explain what life was like then and what it's like now. And so that entailed reading. And it seemed that as we had large print writing that a lot of people did take the time to read that. We're hoping that even though this may be the end of the, uh, the funded competitions for the fairs, that our fair will continue with this type of exhibit because it is such a hit with our public. They now specifically come to see this. They stop here first thing as they come into the fair. And so next year we're hoping to continue with a similar type of exhibit. Thank you.